Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you. Big sixth graders, we've got some great information for you today. We are going to start naming the notes on the staff. The staff is this thing that's got five lines and four spaces. It's important to know that when we count, we count from the bottom up. One, two, three, four, and five. The spaces, one, two, three, four. It's a little different than when you're numbering your paper in math and you start at the top and go down. We're going the opposite way. So we like musicians a, have to stand out. I know, it's like opposite day. Have you ever had opposite day? Well, I feel like music is opposite of Oftentimes everything. Oftentimes it is. Yes. Now you are very familiar with this little symbol right here and it moves around a bit. This is called the Do Clef sign. And the job of the Do Clef sign is to tell us where Do is. Excellent, but guess what? <gasps> We're gonna start taking the Do Clef sign away. Oh, and no. you are going to start reading music the way all professional musicians do. How exciting. We are going to introduce you to a different clef. It is not called the doe clef. It is called the treble. Treble, clef. treble, treble. And the treble clef looks just like this. It's very fancy. Yes, yours is a lot prettier than mine. It's very swirly and everything. Yeah. But guess what? Here's the secret to the treble clef. It also has another name. And if you're really watching this video, you probably are gonna get extra points on a future exam. Yes. Because I like to ask, what is the other name for the treble clef? Ms. It's Lowry, do you know? It's the G clef. It is called the G clef. And there is a reason why it is called the G clef. Because this little swirly part right here goes around the second line. And the official name of the second line is G. G. So this second line, when you have a note head on it, is called G. Now, when I write it, I have to write a capital letter. If I write a lowercase letter, it is going to be wrong. 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 Because we use capital letters to name our notes. We don't have a note that's named Kelly. We don't have a note that's <laughs> named Brett. We have notes that are named A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Once you get to G, you start over with A. Then you go all the way. There is no X or Y or Z. Only A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Cool. Now then, if that's true, what comes after G? A. And then B, it just starts all over it again. It does, it C. just keeps going and going and going. Yes. But wait a minute, what happens if I go this way? What comes before A? Ooh, G. G, look at that, she's pointing, giving you all kinds of hints. What's before G? F. What's before F? E. So it just keeps going that way. I can go infinitely either direction. Just like our solfege will go infinitely up and down, our absolute pitches will go up and down. Now then, I have some handy dandy magnets. magnets that we are going to use today. We hope they're able to be seen very easily on the video. We're gonna just go ahead and flat out tell you, well, you already know one note. Yes. It's G. So now my question is this. If this is G and we know it's G, we're right here mm -hmm. on our letter line. I'm having to go which direction to get to name this note? Down. I'm going down. And on a number line, you go to the left. Mm -hmm. Just like in math, if it was one, two, three, four, well, before one would be zero before zero would be negative one, and so on. So we're going this way to go down. If I'm on G and I'm only going one step, I am now going to be on F. So I am going to write F in a capital letter. If I were to write F like this. That would be fa. That could be fa. It could be a dynamic marking that oh, means forte. forte. 
See. It could be all kinds of things. It cannot be lowercase when we are talking about absolute pitch, okay? Now, if we are on F, and we are now going to name just the notes that are on the space of the treble clef. If we're on F, we are going to skip G and go to A. A. So this will be A. Now we're on A, and we're skipping B to get to C. You see that? Yes. Now because we're on these C. these would be the line. Exactly. Yes. I get it. And now we're on C. We're skipping D to get to... Whoa, that spells a word. That's cool. And it spells the word that rhymes with this word. Space. Face in the space. Give your face some space. Oh, yeah. Now that's just for the spaces, spaces. on the treble clef. Not any other clef. Now, that, if that's true, if we were to start to put up magnets for our lines, we already know one. Yes. We know the second line is G. G. If the second line is G, hey, wait a minute. We know this is F, F so we can just kind of put it really small right and there. And then here's F, so what so would be So we're going right one below? step back which means it would be E. So we have two E's. Oh yeah, we, we have, have a line E, we have a space E. That's Absolutely, cool. and on the piano there are seven E's. Uh, there you go. So there's lots and lots. However, if you see the first line, I am going to play or sing only that note. It is not the same note mm. as the one up here. This it sounds very different. It sounds one octave, higher, eight notes higher. But let's just stay focused on our lines. Now if we're on G, we are skipping A to get to there you go. B. That's B. We're on B. We are skipping to get to D. And last but not least, the fifth line at the top, we are skipping E to get to F. Look at that. Egbedef. Unfortunately, egbedef <laughs> is uh, not, not a, a word in English. Egbedef. But we do have a really cool way of remembering yes, the lines do. and spaces. I'm going to teach you a rhyme. Okay, so hold up your so first, then spread them out. There you go. This okay. is your staff. Yes. Your mobile we have staff. Line one, line two, three, four, five, and then here are our spaces. So here's the rhyme. E, e G, B, D, F. F. These, These are, are the, the lines of the treble clef. F, F, A, C, E. That spells space. Don't, don't you see? Learning spaces, learning lines. It's so easy when it rhymes. Absolutely. Say it after me. And since you're sixth graders, I really think you can do two phrases at a time. So wait for me to invite you in. E, G, B, D, F. These are the lines of the treble clef. E, G, B, D, F. These are the lines of the treble clef. F A C E, that spells space, don't you see? F A C E, that spells face, don't you see? Learning spaces, learning lines, it's so easy when it rhymes. Learning spaces, learning lines, it's so easy when it rhymes. Good, practice that a lot, okay? That will help you when we come to an assessment, which will come up pretty soon. Pretty soon, okay? All right. You know, so. I bet. Oh! What do you bet? You need to answer a question. I want you to answer in the discussion bar below. What is the name of the treble clef? There's the a second name. name. Yes. What is the second name for the treble clef? Ooh, and bonus points if you can tell us why it's called that. 
I like it. But remember, whatever you do, when you type that out, that one part of the name had better be a capital letter. If it's lowercase, you will not get the credit. Mm -mm. Because if I was to spell my first name on my paper, I would not spell it like this. Mm -mm. I mean, I would spell it that way, but I would not write it that way. I would have to change my first letter to a capital, capital. letter. Yes. It would have to look like that. So when we name notes, always use capital letters. That's right. Have a great day, guys. Okay, bye.